All right, today's lesson is on solving rational equations. And of course, um, things that are rational are uh, things that have a ratio. Um, and so it's a polynomial divided by another polynomial, like this. And an equation is uh, where there's going to be an equal sign and we're trying to find out what x is. That's what solving an equation means. And so um, we can start with something fairly simple. Uh, this is an example of a rational equation. And what we're looking for is three divided by what will give us six. And so this is a fairly easy rational equation. And I think it will do a good job of demonstrating our basic techniques we're gonna to use today. And the idea is whenever we have something dividing, we can undo it by multiplying. And so uh, we're allowed to take two sides and multiply them both by the same thing, even if that thing is X. So we can multiply both sides by X and we get here, dividing by x and multiplying it by x cancel out, and we get 3 equals 6x. And now this is a linear equation where we're just trying to get x by itself. And we can divide both sides by 6 and get that x is 1 half. Okay, So that's what x is. Uh, and we can go back to the beginning and we can check it. 3 divided by 1 half is 6. And uh, to divide by a fraction, we need to multiply by the reciprocal. So 3 divided by 1 half is the same as 3 times 2. And that's correct. Uh, a half goes into 3 six times. A half plus a half is 1, plus a half is 1.5, plus a half is 2, plus a half is 2.5, plus a half is 3. So 6 halves make uh, 3. All right. Now let's look at how this kind of connects to things we've been doing before. Um, there is one tricky thing we need to be a little careful of, and that is something like this. If we try to use this last technique we had, um, x divided by x equals zero, well, we can multiply by x on both sides, and we get x equals zero, and we're done, x is zero. The problem is, is that this is an extraneous solution because when we try to use, when we try to check and see if it works, it doesn't. Zero divided by zero does not equal zero. This is undefined. And the problem is, is that x divided by x can be simplified to just one, and one does not equal zero. Um, well, it's one when x doesn't equal zero. Uh, another way to think about it is the um, there is an excluded value. at x equals zero. And so if our answer ever makes the denominator zero, um, it won't work. So just like logs, where we only had to check to make sure it didn't make the inside of the log negative, um, when we're solving rational functions, we need to make sure that our solution doesn't make the uh, inside of the equation equal to zero. All right, with that said, let's hop into some more things. Let's start with an algebra one level rational equation. It's actually a linear equation that looks kind of like a rational equation. And there are two ways to solve this. There's two basic ways to solve this. Um, three ways, really. Um, but, but two of the ways are very similar. The first way is we can say like, okay, we need to get x by itself. So we subtract the one third on the other side. And we have to do 11, 6 minus 1 third. And I'm going to kind of do that off to the side. To combine these, we need to get a common denominator. So 11, 6 minus, uh, I'm going to multiply by 2 over 2 to get sixths. This is 2 sixths. And so this is 9 sixths, which I can simplify. 9 sixths is 3 halves, because I can divide by 3 and divide by 3. And so I get x over 2 equals 3 halves. And I can take the x and multiply it by 2, multiply this by 2. And I have two options over here. I could either change this into a fraction and multiply across and then simplify it, or I could notice that multiplying by 2 and dividing by 2 will cancel out, and so I get that x is 3. So that's one way to do it. There is another usually easier way that involves fewer fractions, and that is to, I'm going to write this off to the side, so we're going to solve the same problem in a different way. We're going to multiply both sides by the GCF, uh, the G, the, we'll call it the LCD. It's the GCF of the denominators, the least common denominator. Um, what do these have in common? Well, the least common denominator is six here. 
um, because we can multiply this by 3 over 3 to get to 6, this by 2 over 2 to get to 6, and this one's already 6. And so what this looks like is we multiply the left side by 6, and we multiply the right side by 6. On the left side, it's going to distribute. So every time there's a plus or minus every term, basically every term on both sides will get multiplied by 6. And here's how this is going to go. When we multiply 6 times x, I'm going to go a little slower here, although later we'll go a little bit faster. 6 times x over 2. We're multiplying by 6 and dividing by 2. And there's a shortcut way we've learned how to do this, which is that if you're multiplying by something and dividing, you can actually divide these ones. So 6 divided by 2 is 3. So the 6 was getting divided by 2, and that's 3. So there's 3x's left over here. Here we've got 6 times 1 third. You can think of it as 6 getting divided by 3. And so this is going to be just... 6 divided by 3, which is 2, and 2 times 1, which is 2. And on the other side, we've got um, 11, 6 times 6, and multiplying by 6 and dividing by 6 cancels out. And this becomes really quick. Almost everybody just skips this middle step, and they're like, oh, 6 divided by 2 is 3, so 3x. 6 divided by 3 is 2, so 2 times 1 is 2. 6 times 6 divided by 6 cancels out, 11. And so it's very easy to jump straight to here and get 3x equals 9, divide by 3x equals 3. And this gets rid of our fractions for us. And we're going to make a lot of use of this in just a second. Um, so with that in mind, a piece of paper, let's look at some slightly more Algebra 2-y things. All right. So here is a problem that looks way more complicated. And just like before, I could try to like combine like terms and get a common denominator. But um, when you've got a bunch of different denominators, multiplying by the least common denominator will make our lives easier because it'll get rid of all of the fractions. There won't be any fractions. So the question is, what is the least common denominator? Um, these are all monomials, so it should just be some monomial we can multiply by to get to. And so I think first I should look at the, the numbers, and whatever the denominator is, is, I need to multiply both 2 to get to it and 3 to get to it. So I know it'll need to be 6, right? Um, 3 over 3 can multiply to make this 6. 2 over 2 can multiply to make this 6. So I know I'll be able to make 6. And I can multiply by 6 over 6 here if I wanted to get there. Then I look at my variables. And I've got an x, an x, and an x squared. The least common denominator is going to be whichever the biggest one is. Just like these got bigger to make 6, um, I'm going to need an x squared here. And the reason is, is because I can multiply by x over x to get to x squared. Multiply by x to get to x squared. This one's already an x squared, and I can multiply by x over x to get to x squared. And so I want to show you two different ways of doing this. One is to recognize that this is the least common denominator, and to multiply to get it. So what that would look like is, okay... To get a common denominator, I would need to multiply by 3x over 3x. That would get me 6x squared. So on the top, I'd get 18x. Here, I would need to multiply to get to 6x squared. I would need to multiply by 6x over 6x, because that will get me 6x squared, my least common denominator. This is also going to be 18x. Here, I need to multiply by... Um, 6, so times 6 over 6. This is going to give me 54 over 6x squared. And here, um, I can multiply by 2x over 2x. And so I will get 18x over 6x squared. These can combine now. Um, 18x, they both have a common denominator, so I can leave the denominator alone and get 18x minus 18x, which is 0. 0 over 6x squared. Here I can combine these and get 54 minus 18x. This becomes just 0. And here um, I know from my rational functions unit that the way to make this equal to 0 is to get um, the numerator equal to 0. So to solve this, all I really need to do is to find where the numerator is 0, because 0 divided by anything is 0. So I'm going to rewrite this as 54 minus 18x is to equal 0. Subtract the 15, 54 and divide by negative 18 and get 3. So x is 3. But this felt like a lot of work. And so I, 
this multiplying by the LCD wave? Let's see how that looks. Okay, so the LCD was 6x squared. We already said that. And we're just going to multiply everything on both sides by 6x squared. So everything on the left multiplies by 6x squared. Everything on the right multiplies by 6x squared. And um, this is, of course, going to distribute. When we multiply 6x squared times this, 6x squared is going to get divided by 2x. And 6x squared divided by 2x is equal to 3, and there's still an x left over, so 3x is getting multiplied times 6. So I took these and divided them to see what would be left over. Um, and that's where this 6x squared divided by 2x got me the 3x, and then the 6 is still getting multiplied. So just like before, we're going to do the same thing here. 6x squared divided by x, 6x squared divided by x, and there's still a minus here. Um, I don't know why I'm writing this in red. 6x squared divided by x is 6x, and there's still a times 3 there. So the 6x divided by x got me 6x, and it's still multiplying times 3. Over here, when I multiply by 6x squared, 6x squared divided by x squared is just 6, and 6 times 9 is going to be 54. Here's 6x squared, there's a minus here. Uh, 6x squared divided by 3x, 6 divided by 3 is 2, and x squared divided by x is x. And that's getting multiplied times 9. So what I get is 18x minus 18x equals 54 minus 18x. And you'll notice that's exactly the same as I, like, there's a lot similar to up above. There's just no fractions. 0 equals 54 minus 18x. I can add the 18x to the other side. Or I could have subtracted the 54 and divide by 18, and I get x equals 3 here also. And again, a lot of people, once you get a little bit of practice, they're just like, oh, this divided by this is 3x. 3x times 6 is 18x. This divided by this is 6x. 6x times negative 3 is negative 18x. All right, um, let's look at some other types of examples that are going to be uh, the same idea, but are going to look a little different. And I'm just going to switch over to just multiplying the, by the least common denominator. So the question is, what is the denominator we can get to with both of these? Like, what could we multiply this one? Before, when we had these numbers, we were like, oh, we can multiply this by 3x to get to 6x squared, and this by 6x to get to 6x squared. They were all monomials. So these were monomials. Because there's nothing added together. But here there's a binomial x minus 2, this minus 2 makes it a binomial, uh, and x minus 1, and so there's nothing we can multiply this one to to get to something that's a multiple of this. So what we do is we say the least common denominator is going to be x minus 2 times x minus 1. We just multiply them together. Basically, if we were going to get a common denominator and try to add these, we would multiply this one by x minus 1 over x minus 1, and this one by x minus 2 over x minus 2, and so that this one would have x minus 1 times x minus 2, and this one would have x minus 1 times x minus 2, and they would have the same denominator. So we're going to multiply by both of these. And here's how this is going to work. So we're going to multiply by x minus 2 times x minus 1, and we're going to do it on both sides. On this side, when we multiply by x minus 2 and divide by x minus 2, that will cancel out, leaving me only an x minus 1. So it's x minus, so these will cancel out, and I'll get x minus 1 times 1, which is x minus 1. When I multiply this times this one, so this is distributing, right? When it multiplied times the first one, the x minus 2 is canceled out. It gave me just x minus 1. Here, when I multiply x minus 2 times x minus 1 and divide by x minus 1, multiplying by x minus 1 and dividing by x minus 1 will cancel out. And what I'll be left with is x minus 2 times 4. Now, that 4, of course, will distribute. So we'll get 4 times x minus 2, and we'll get 4x minus 8. So what happened here is multiplying by x minus 1 and dividing by x minus 1 canceled out. Notice our fractions are going away. And on the right side, this is actually the harder part, even though it was the part that didn't have fractions. 
I have three things multiplying, three times x minus two times x minus one, and I can multiply in any order I want, but I can only multiply two things at a time. So I can multiply three times x minus two, and then take that answer and multiply by x minus one, or I'm actually gonna choose to multiply these two together. So I'm gonna do three times x minus two times x minus one is, this will distribute like this. So x squared minus x minus two x plus two. Um, and I can combine like terms before I, I'm going to combine like terms before I multiply out the three. So I, I combine these x, the negative x and the two x. And now I can multiply out the three. So three x squared minus nine x plus six. And this of course just distributed. So I had to pick any two to multiply. And I, I could have multiplied this out first and gotten three x minus six. And then that times x minus one. And this would have gotten me the same answer. It just would have been a little bit uh, bigger numbers some, along the way. All right, so now this is a quadratic, um, and I can solve it by making it equal to zero. So 3x squared, um, I can subtract 4x and an x, and so that is going to be minus 14x, and I can add 1 and add 8, and so I'll get plus 15. I'm going to have to factor this or use quadratic formula. Um, so this looks easy enough to do by guess and check. So 3x and x. And I need to find something that I'll multiply to make positive 15 where I'll get the right number of x's. And it looks like if I put a 3 here and a 5 here, that'll work. Because this will give me negative 5x's. And this will give me negative 9x's. But you can factor it however you want. As long as you should be comfortable with factoring. This adds up to be 14, negative 14x's. 14 um, and so I'm going to solve and get that x equals 3 is the easy answer. And then what makes this equal to 0? Well, I can add 5 and divide by 3 and get x is 5 thirds. And I do need to check at the end to make sure that these do not make the denominator equal to 0. So when x is 3, that doesn't make either one of these denominators equal to 0. And when x is 5 thirds, that doesn't make either one of these denominators equal to 0. And so they're not extraneous solutions. But it is something I need to check on. All right. The last example problem we're going to do here is let's do 6 over x plus 4 plus 1 over x minus 1 equals 12 over x squared plus 3x minus 4. And this looks harder, but actually isn't. What we need to do is we need to find a common denominator between these. And so the common denominator is clearly x plus 4 times x minus 1. But if we factor, I suspect we'll see that this one is equal to, let's factor this. This is x plus 4 times x minus 1, which is the common denominator. So it turns out that the, these two multiplied together gives you this one. And so what's going to happen is when we multiply by the common denominator, which we will. So the common denominator is x plus 4 times x minus 1 because they're binomials. It's going to make the right side much easier than it was last time. So this is going to distribute. And when the x plus 4 times x minus 1 multiplies times this one, multiplying by x plus 4 and dividing by x plus 4 will cancel out. And we're left with 6 times x minus 1. 6 will distribute, 6x six minus 6. When we multiply x plus 4 times x minus 1 times the second one, so it distributes, the multiplying by x minus 1 and the dividing by x minus 1 will cancel out, and we'll get x plus 4 times 1, which is x plus 4. And the right side is going to be even easier, because multiplying by x plus 4 and, and x minus 1 will cancel out with dividing by x plus 4 and x minus 1, and we'll just get 12. And so this is a linear function equation. 7x, I'm going to move these to the other side, equals, so add 6, subtract 4 is 14, so x equals 2. Now, I do need to be careful that the denominators aren't 0. This is called checking for extraneous solutions. Uh, but I only need to check this one and this one because uh, these multiplied together will give this. So 6, 1, not 0. Um, and so my denominator is not 0. All right, let me give you a few to try. Um, why don't you pause your video in a second and try some of these and see how you feel about it. Here are one, two, three, and four. So here are these four to try. You can, I'll, I'll leave it on these two for a second and then I'll move it up in a minute. 
So pause your video, write these down. Here's the fourth one, pause your video, write it down and try to solve it. Unpause your video when you're done or when you get stuck. Let's see how we did. Um, this first one, you should recognize that the least common denominator is um, a two. These are monomials, so we can just like figure out what thing these all can multiply to make. The number they can multiply to make is two, and we need to get to at least x squared. So um, the LCD will always be bigger than whatever the lower things are. It's like the, the smallest thing that is big enough to cover all of them. Um, and so we're going to multiply everything by 2x squared. It's just going to like distribute to everything on all sides. When we multiply times this one, we'll get 2x squared times 2. We'll cancel out. And we will get x cubed. Because uh, dividing by 2 and multiplying by 2 will cancel out. And I'll get x squared times x is x cubed. Here, this will... Uh, 2x squared divided by 2x is x x times 8 is 8x. And here um, we will get the x squared will cancel out and we'll get equals 96 because uh, 2x squared divided by x squared is 2. 2 times 48 is 96. And we have a cubic. So um, this goes back to our cubic factoring stuff. So I'm going to make it equal to 0. And what I need, oh, minus 96 equals 0. And remember our rational zeros, we need to find, uh, it's gonna be a multiple of 96. So I'm just gonna start trying numbers until this gives me zero and I just need to find one and I'll be able to use long division. So, um, man, this is a hard one for you guys to start with. Um, so if you got stuck on this, that's okay. Let's see. So when I plug in one, that's not zero. When I plug in two, that's not zero. When I plug in three, 27 plus 24, no. Uh, when I plug in four, four cubed is 64 plus 8 times 4 is 32, 32 minus 96 is 0. So um, x equals 4 is a solution, and so that tells me that x minus 4 is a factor of this, and so I need to do long division. So x cubed plus 0x squared, there's missing an x squared term, plus 8x minus 96. Um, I'm going to divide that by x minus 4. And again, I know this will go in evenly because x equals 4 was one of our possible zeros. So it was a 0. It made this equal to 0. So x goes into this x squared times. x squared times x is x cubed. x squared times this is minus 4x squared. And we are subtracting. When we subtract x cubed, we get 0 here. When we subtract a negative 4x squared, we get positive 4x squared and we're going to bring down the rest. x goes into 4x squared, 4x times uh, 4x times x is 4x squared. 4x times negative 4 is negative 16x. And when I subtract this, I get 0. Minus a negative is plus, so this is 8 plus 16x is 24x. And I'm going to bring down the negative 96. Hopefully we're all feeling good about long division. Uh, we need to not forget things. X goes into 24x 24 times. And um, when I multiply, I get 24x minus 96. And when I subtract, it's going to be 0. So this factors into x minus 4 times, what did I get for my long division? x squared plus 4x plus 24. And that needs to equal 0. So one answer is obviously x equals 4. And then this can't be factored. I mean, I can look at it for a second and see if it could be factored, but I, I did, and it can't be. So I need to use the quadratic formula. Um, so negative 4 plus or minus square root of 4 squared minus 4 times 1 times 24 all over 2 times 1. Okay. So negative 4 plus or minus the square root of negative 80 over 2. I can simplify square root of negative 80. This is square root of 16 times square root of 5 times square root of negative 1. And I chose this because square root of negative 16 is 4. Square root of 5 cannot be simplified. And this is the imaginary number i because we were doing the square root of a negative. So the answers are x equals 4. 
This is negative 4 plus or minus uh, 4i times the square root of 5 over 2, and this can divide by 2. So the solutions are x is 4, and x equals negative 2 plus or minus 2i root 5, because this can divide by 2. Those are my answers. Wow, that was a crazy problem. I should have uh, maybe solved it before I made this video. I don't know. Um, this next one is a lot easier. Um, the least common, and hopefully you had more success here, the least common denominator. And if you didn't have more success in the first one and you stopped because of it, why don't you try this one now? Because this one will be a lot easier. Um, this one has a least common denominator of 6. When I multiply times this, 6 divided by 2 is 3. 3 times 5x is 15x. 6 divided by 2 is 3. 3 times x is 3x. 6 divided by 6 is 1. 1 times 18x is 18x. Or I could just think of it as like multiplying and dividing cancel out. Okay. Um, 18x minus 18x. I'm going to get the x's all on the same side equals 0. And I get 0 equals 0. And this tells me that there are infinite solutions. Okay. All right. Um, this next one, the least common denominator was, you know, and I, with my infinite solutions, I need to make sure that none of them are making the denominator zero, but nothing makes the denominator zero here because there's no variables in the denominator. So here I'm going to multiply x plus one times x plus three. That's my least common denominator. And when I multiply times this one on the left, Multiplying by x plus 1 and dividing by x plus 1 will cancel out. 5 times x plus 3 is 5x plus 15. Multiplying by x plus 3 and dividing by x plus 3 will cancel out. 6 times x plus 1 is 6x plus 6. And here, this won't cancel out. I need to actually multiply them out. So x plus 1 times x plus 3 is it's going to be 1 times, which isn't going to do anything. Um, x times x is x squared plus 3x plus 1x plus 3, and this simplifies to be x squared plus 4x plus 3, and when I multiply it by 1, it just gives me back the x squared plus 4x plus 3. This is a quadratic. I'm going to make it equal to 0 with the x squared positive, so I'm going to move all of this to the other side. So minus 5x minus 6x, that's minus 11x, and 4x minus 11x is negative 7x. This is 21. 3 minus 21 is negative 18. I hope this factors. This is what multiplies to make negative 18 that adds to be negative 7. So minus 9 plus 2. Uh, and so x equals 9 or negative 2. And neither 9 nor negative 2 make the denominator 0. So they are not extraneous solutions. They both win. Okay, last one is what's the greatest common denominator here? And I'm going to... I see I need to multiply by an x, but I'm going to factor this one. This is x times x plus 4. And so I can see that I need to multiply by x, but I also need to multiply by an x plus 4. And so the LCD is just x times x plus 4. So I'm going to multiply by that. x times x plus 4. When I multiply times this 1 on the far left, it cancels out the whole denominator because multiplying by x times x plus 4 and dividing by x times x plus 4 cancels out. And all we're left with is 5. Here, multiplying by x and dividing by x will cancel out, so it'll be minus 3 times x plus 4. And we need to be a little careful here. I see some kids mess this up. It's minus 3 times x plus 4, and this negative is going to distribute also. I sometimes see people not distribute the negative. So minus 3x minus 12 because the x is canceled out. And the same thing is going to happen on the right side. The multiplying by x and the dividing by x will cancel out. So it's negative 2 times x plus 4. That's negative 2x minus 8 because the negative is also distributing. So make sure when there's a negative there you're distributing. This is just linear. So I'm going to move the x's to this side. So add 3x's. I'm going to move the minus 8 to the other side. And this is 1. 5 minus 12 is negative 7. Negative 7 plus 8 is 1. And does 1 make the denominator to 0? No. So it's done. All right, guys. That's it for solving rational equations.